good morning good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching this video welcome to or welcome back to my e-bike adventures well i'm gonna have a bit of a change of plan today oh i left my kickstand down Right, well, the reason I'm having a change of plan today um, is because this is the only really nice day um, that we've got this week. <clears throat> Every other day, it's rain and thunderstorms. Welcome to the UK summer. So, with that in mind, um, We've got 35 to 40 mile an hour gusts of wind at the moment. Um, where I was planning on going, unfortunately, was quite in the open. So I need to find somewhere that's a little bit shaded from those elements and from the wind. Uh, I've moved inland because the coast, the coast away was just far too windy, um, which is a shame, but never mind, you know, we'll make the most out of today as we can. So I think what we'll do is we're going to head off towards the canal and uh, we'll go and find some shelter in some trees along there But yeah, what a week it's been. Um, some of you may be aware, I went to Silverstone uh, to see the Formula One race. Um, now, I did take some footage while I was there, but I'm gonna be honest, um, I didn't take the majority of my camera equipment with me, um, purely for the fact that it was raining so heavily there. Um, and what we're having to carry um, a lot of camera equipment etc with me into the venue um, plus some summer clothes some very heavy winter and rain clothes and also a set of dry clothes which just meant it was pretty impossible really um, for me to take all of my camera equipment there, unfortunately as well. Um, wanting to leave 3,000 pounds worth of camera equipment in my tent while I went to the race was definitely a no-go. Um, that's not something I was prepared to do. Um, now, I will admit, Silverstone is probably better than a lot of musical festivals but um, there's a lot of theft goes on you know at these type of things people raid tents etc that wasn't something really I was prepared to do because um, I could have essentially have come back to my tent and found all of my camera equipment stolen um, so yeah unfortunately there will be no um, camping video of me at Silverstone, but then as I said, it was going to be a bonus video because I wasn't going to be on my e-bike. So I'll probably do a collage or montage, whatever it's called, of um, everything I took um, film-wise on my phone. Um, and I'll put that at the end of this video. But uh, 
yeah it was just first day um, it, it pretty much rained for 24 hours it was so heavy um, and yeah I, I just had to make a decision before we left Ho I was hoping that the weather was going to be much nicer but um, I mean I still enjoyed my time at Silverstone don't get me wrong absolutely fantastic race um, also to see Lewis Hamilton win oh man that was so good even though um, I mean three Brits as well uh, in uh, one two and three position after qualifying that was something else as well you know so it really was quite a race to be honest you know and uh, I was so happy I mean I was rooting for Lando and McLaren but I was also rooting for Lewis Hamilton and George Russell um, Lewis the most though um, because you know he hasn't won a race for such a long time and it was just so good to see him back on the podium and wow you know it was a really emotional thing for him as well you know he cried several times after winning that race and and the speech he gave after the race as well it was just it was all so very humbling and yeah i was really happy and yeah absolutely amazing experience so um i got a few things in the post i'm not sure if i remember saying that last time but um so Russia actually have, uh, I've now received my cable replacement set for the tracks um, unfortunately I just haven't had a chance to put it um, on yet I was going to do it today but then the weather changed a bit and uh, it meant that I could get out and today obviously as I said we're raining every single day apart from today <laughs> oh. I honestly can't believe this year you know it's like it really is the very worst year that I can ever remember But also, I've, um, I've got a helmet coming in the post. Um, Cy Russia have also sent me uh, one of their helmets. Now I'm just hoping that, uh, and fingers crossed, that um, it's not the strap isn't going to go over my ears or cut in at the back of my ear essentially that's what stopped me from wearing safety helmets in the past because after wearing them for about five minutes I am literally in pain um, from the straps so I'm just hoping I mean they did offer to send it to me free so that's really nice of them um, I'm just hoping that it fits me well so hopefully um, I do have some tracking information for that so Hopefully, I should be wearing a, a cycle helmet for my next video. Hooray! I hear you all shout. Hooray! Because I know you're all waiting for me to fall off my bike again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I kind of need to be safe, don't I? Really? I know what it is. You know, I'm kind of, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm an old school cyclist, bike rider, and when I was a kid, there wasn't, the only people that wore cycling helmets, and I'm not even sure when that was introduced, to be honest, it could be 2000, somewhere, somewhere in the early 2000s, 
but the only time I ever saw people wearing cycling helmets were during races. Um, obviously, safety has improved, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I never wore anything like that when I was a kid growing up. You know. And there was a part of me, if I'm honest, that thought, you know, why do I need one? But, yeah, we all really need to take those safety precautions and safety measures, really. Um, so, after this video, I'll be wearing a I'll be wearing a safety helmet. Well, hopefully, as I said, fingers crossed. It's all fits and doesn't hurt my ears, essentially. Um, my apologies for last week's video. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I couldn't believe that day. It was just like whatever was going to go wrong, went wrong. Um, I think I found the solution to um, the audio cutting out but I'm not 100% sure, so today is my first real time to actually even try it again um, properly out in the field. I've tried it at home, it all appears to work, but um, you know, it seems sometimes the gods are against you. So we shall see how well it fares today, but I'm hoping it'll be really okay. So my initial plan was to go back where I did a, so not my initial plan, my initial plan was to go on one of the big hills, but um, obviously it's too windy for that. So I did think about coming along here and going to where I camped, but I will admit that's quite overgrown in there and um, I'm not sure how well it would look. So I'm going to go down much, much further along the canal. I'm probably going to need to get my maps out because you can only go so far along here and then there's a big gate essentially and I won't be able to get past. Oh. So I need to go back out on the road and essentially double back on myself. And I'm thinking of going back to where I first went in my very first video. which was literally enjoying the last day of summer. Uh, where I went out on my Komoda and I took some music equipment with me and a barbecue and I wrote some music and had a nice bit to eat by the canal. Um, so I'm thinking that I can go back there today. Oh, hopefully. I do need to be aware of my surroundings and keep oh keep my eyes peeled and the flies out of my mouth because every time I open my mouth flies go in it and then they hit the back of your throat and you either cough and cough them out or you swallow them and I'll be honest I've probably swallowed more flies than I care to. Yeah, not nice. They might be nutritional. I'm not really sure of the nutritional value of a fly. Perhaps someone could let me know how many calories per fly there is, you know. <laughs>
But anyway, I'm kind of, um, I didn't want to come out in all my attire today because obviously when I was at Silverstone, I bought myself my orange McLaren top and I've got a bright orange McLaren cap. And then <laughs> obviously I want to wear all my new stuff. But then I thought, you know what? I'm coming out on an orange bike. I'm just gonna look like, well, an orange or a Satsuma or a mandolin, mandarin, mandolin, a mandarin. Essentially, I just look like I've been tangoed. Okie dokie. I think I go right here. Pretty sure I do anyway, because we need to follow. I mean, look at this, it's absolutely beautiful. Look at this view. It's absolutely gorgeous. It is a bit windy here, but um, I'm hoping that the wind doesn't go over my voice too much. Go by. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. I hate it when I see other cyclists just riding past oh, you guys yeah, so exactly. much. One like that is useless. Can you yeah. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah. See, if you're in the UK or America or wherever you are, don't zoom past someone on a horse. Just let them pass you. It takes, how long did I stop for? You know, barely any time. How much is it taking out of my day? Nothing. Have a little bit of respect for other people, you know? Because I do, I've, I've seen, I've been behind, well, actually, this was last year, and I was cycling along along the, by the canal, and I was in front, and I did a very similar thing. I slowed right down and came to a stop. And then what happened? Just before the horse got to me, two lycra-clad cyclists zoomed past, doing about 30 miles an hour, and scared the horse. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened to that horse? It got scared and it threw the rider off its back. Now, thankfully, the rider was okay. I went over and checked, you know, like you would. But I'm talking to you, you lycra clad cyclists. Stop it. The road does not belong to you. Be respectful, be mindful. The road doesn't belong to any one of us. We all have to share. And the quicker you learn that and stop acting like you own the road, the much nicer and friendlier place the roads are going to be, and safer. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know. It's not nice being thrown from a horse. And there's been cases of people breaking their spine being thrown from a horse. Can you imagine that? Being paralyzed because some idiot, some lycra-clad idiot, or someone in a car drove past the horse too quick, scared it, and threw the rider off. Just think about that for a moment, you know? 
paralyzed for life because you couldn't wait five seconds. Are you really that important? Right, I think. Am I? I mean, I don't know, but uh, I think this might be at the canal bridge. In which case, if it is, I need to turn right. Is indeed this is the bridge over the canal not the bridge over the river Kwai right. over, oh, a, uh, over a cattle bridge so um, also another thing um, obviously, I talked about the Ovia EEC that Cy Russia have sent me, which I should be able to um, register as a low-powered pedelec. Well, they have done the job, and in the post rushing to me now is a new display that will actually display miles per hour instead of kilometres per hour, which was the big thing because in order to register a bike in this country your speedometer must display miles per hour now unfortunately um, I know they might make that bike for the rest of the world and most other places are okay with kilometers per hour it's really mostly the UK that uh, as far as I'm aware has the issue with kilometers per hour so um, but they've done their thing so that's in the post on its way to me and hopefully I should see that in the next week or so once that's on the bike I'm gonna put the uh, there's all the cows to my left yeah once that's on the bike what we're gonna do is I'll put my application form in and we'll give it a go and see if we can get the bike registered um, as a low powered pedelec essentially but I needed to make sure before I put my application form in that the bike was okay because I don't know how quick um, I'm going to get a date essentially so it would have been no good of me applying um, and then getting a date before this new controller or new display basically arrived be a perfect little spot for a stealth camp even and also a nice little fishing spot really this would be ideal again lots of lily pads out there where carpet etc can hide under oh this could be proved, proving like a really good spot. Right, as always, anyway, enough of you be yabbering. I'm here, I'm gonna get set up and uh, I'll join you in a bit. Okay, so um, Paul asked for a um, uh, a video 
showing me what I pack in my bag, essentially. Um, I'll do a more in-depth one when I go camping next, which hopefully will be the fishing trip. But um, for now, I'm just going to show you. Um, so on the rear rack of my bike, normally, um, I would have this bag, which is my OEX chair um, that I always sit in. Um, also on the back normally is my fire pit. Now today I've come out without the fire pit um, specifically um, so I can cook and drink without the fire pit. But um, that's one thing that's normally on my rear rack. Um, also today, um, what else did I bring out? Um, so I did bring out um, this. It's a um, tarp and also I got some poles um, that I brought out with me as well. Um, but I think where I am, I don't really need those at the moment today, essentially. But generally, these things are all on the back of my rack. Oh, and also um, my camera mount, uh, my camera stand is normally on the rear rack. Um, and then in my bag, it's quite light today um, because of... Um, Right, so I've got my mic, one of my microphone solutions. Um, I've got some food here that I'm going to be cooking with. Um, so they're in my bag, so we can pop them down there for now. Um, I haven't brought out my coffee, milk, sugar today. It's what I brought out. Is a couple of uh, double chocker mockers, um, which I'll make a drink with using these. So that's a bit lightweight today. And my Takana stove, which I'll be cooking with and making drinks with. And what else have we got in my bag? So I've got my bushcraft knife. Um, now there's one thing about this knife, I've kind of let it get a little bit discolored. As you can see, it's not as smooth and shiny as it was when it was brand spanking new. But uh, I've got some bits on order because I want to show you how we're going to clean this up essentially and get it looking like brand new again. So that will probably be next week that we'll do that. So for now. Let's pop our knife in our sheath and put that to the side. I've also got my litre of water. Um, well, just under a litre today because, um, because I'm not doing a fire pit, essentially. I won't need any excess water to put it out. Um, so I've got just under a litre of water. I've got a chopping board. I've got a spatula. Ooh. I thought I'd clean that, to be honest. Naughty me. But yeah, I've got a spatula. I've got a wooden plate, nice lightweight wooden plate, um, which I still haven't found out what, <laughs> what wood this is, but it's incredibly light, incredibly light for what it is. Um, and then I've got my travel mug, which keeps everything nice and warm for my drinks. And also I've got my skillet. Right there. And yeah, I mean, that is quite heavy in itself as well, but very good to cook with, very good to cook on. And also other things I've got in my bag. I've got um, this pouch, which contains some tools. Uh, there's a puncture repair kit in there as well. And a few other bits and pieces. Essentially that's my bike 
um, repair kit. Um, I've got my titanium cutlery set with me. And I've got some oil today in an Algene bottle. Um, way more oil than I actually need today, but um, you can never be too sure. So that's there. Um, I've got the handle to my skillet. Which I'm going to pop in the bag still. And an essential bottle opener. And another little knife on there should I need it and obviously when I'm drinking wine I obviously need a bot a corkscrew as well so uh, a nice little thing there I'm not going to put them on the grass because I don't want to essentially lose them but yeah that's what I've got in my bag today before we do anything let's get my on the stove out because I feel a drink is in order. I'm a bit thirsty after all this riding. So we'll get all this out. Um, I will be using this to um, support the skillet on my Takana stove. But that's only for when we cook. So, so let's fill my cup up with some water because we don't. I only need to boil enough for my drink. That should be enough. And as you can see, I've probably still got enough there for another cup. I could have brought my water filter with me today and actually saved on the weight, but I've, <laughs> I've changed my plans too many times to... Uh, Wonderful. Really what I need is a titanium teaspoon. Because believe it or not, this teaspoon is only just under the whole weight of the rest. So knife, fork, spoon and chopsticks are in here. And this is almost the same weight as the whole cutlery set. So Again, not very much. I mean, if you were to pick this up and go, oh, you know, that's all right, chuck it in. But all these little bits, they all add up and they all contribute to the extra weight you're carrying on your back or on the bike. Anyway, I'm going to rapidly boil this. So I'm going to turn it right up. Oh, you can turn that off. See, it just takes moments, really. I mean, obviously it takes a bit longer if you're boiling up a litre of water. But just for a cup, just for a drink, it takes no time at all. Which means now I can sit back and enjoy my drink. And first things first, let's cut up my pepper. So 
So I hope that you can all see me cutting up this pepper because it's exciting stuff cutting up peppers. And I know that you're all in awe of my culinary cutting up skills. And you're probably all going to watch it again. Of course, I am joking. Right, I brought a, I'm going to cut up a couple of spring onions as well. Let's get a couple of big ones. Oh, one thing that's in my bag that I forgot to get out. And that's my tub. Because essentially, I'm going to pop, crack, three eggs in here. When I was a chef, I used to crack these with one hand, and uh, but I've since had an accident where I put my hand through a glass door, and I can no longer move my middle finger or bend it essentially. So um, let me give it a go though. Let's see if I can do this one-handed still and there we go look i still have the knack it's just a little bit more difficult to do with one digit not playing ball just whisk these up and that i think that's going to be flat enough that we can use this to cook with Let's pop that on there and make sure that our skillet's not going to tip this over. It is a bit wobbly, but um, there's so much grass on the ground and it's quite thick. It's not really, I haven't really got, although I wonder, I wonder if it will fit inside my plate, which Perfect, look at that. A bit more stability there. I think that works quite well. Pop a bit of oil in there. Let's pop more peppers in the pan. Right, I've also got some uh, oak smoked British bacon lardons, dry cured. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. And we're just going to add that bacon into our skillet. Like that. Now that's cooking through a little bit. I'm just going to add my spring onions to the mix. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add my egg mixture over the top. Probably should have brought a much thinner uh, spatula, essentially, and one that bends a little right. but to be honest for cooking out in the wild 
I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> I know it uh, looks a bit of a mess at the moment. And that is because my eyes are bigger than my belly. Oh, oh. yeah, the sun's, the sun's gone behind the cloud. And now it's cold again. We're a bit chilly, anyway. Right. Is this going to kill me? Oh, no. In hindsight, though, I definitely put too much ingredients in the pan. Um, half of that really would have sufficed. Because now looking at it, it looks like I've got more filling than I've got egg. It's lovely. Gorgeous. And really, how long did that take to make? So simple. So on race day at Silverstone, I got up at half past four in the morning. On the race, wasn't until three o'clock in the afternoon. And the reason for getting up at half past four in the morning was to get a good spot because I paid for general admission and not a grandstand. Um, grandstands can be good. But I feel you're quite restricted in there. And um, with general admission, just means you can go anywhere except the grandstands. So the reason I got up early was to get a good spot. Now, <clears throat> I was by far not the only one. At the gate I entered, which was Vale, which was the Vale entrance, rather. Um, <clears throat> when I got there, there was already 50 or 60 people in front of me. Now, I believe there's 19 gates at Silverstone. So, on that premise, I mean, you're talking about a thousand people probably in front of me already at half four in the morning. <clears throat> but if you want a good spot to watch the Grand Prix, there's no point waking up later than that. Because as soon as the gates opened and I was allowed through, we ran. We ran as fast as our legs and our lungs would have us take. And yeah, we only just managed to get a spot. Which was close up against the fence, right in front of the action. You know, this is so nice. But I would say that because I cooked it. Seems I might be attacked by a load of midges. Midges, if you don't know, little flies. Well, I've got an empty plate. So I think that says 
just about everything about that omelette. That's about me for today. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, no, that omelette was definitely a meal, a dinner. <laughs> so it'll be a light lunch this evening or a snack for me when I get home. But yeah, I really enjoyed today. Um, I think, as long as, uh, fingers crossed, I'm just thinking that this might be a potential location for a stealth camp uh, coming up um, we just need some better weather and unfortunately that's in the hands of the gods and uh, for some reason they've been crying their eyes out in the UK for what feels like an eternity at the moment so um, as soon as we've got some uh, dry weather, um, we will be coming out and we will be camping and we will be fishing. Um, I've got that lake, obviously, that I'd like to go. Um, but I need a Monday, Tuesday or a Wednesday. So I need two days. So I even need a Monday or Tuesday or a Tuesday and Wednesday um, because that was the agreement that I made with the, uh, the gentleman who owns the lake, essentially. Um, he just said it's too busy Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday to do what I want to do. So I'm just hoping and praying that um, there will be a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday that are going to be dry in the foreseeable future. But um, yeah, no, this does look like a really nice place to potentially come and have a stealth camp. Um, so I might do an overnight one here soon. But yeah. Um, as I said, um, my apologies about the Silverstone camping video. That didn't happen. I will put some choice clips at the end um, for you to see. And uh, there's not a lot, really. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll put a few things up there. I'm pretty much all packed away anyway. So, um, as I said, yep, that about wraps up this video. Um, all I'd like to do is thank you once again for watching the video um, to the end. If you made it this far, I love you. I love you. Um, there should be a prize, really, for people who even make it this far, really. <laughs> Shouldn't there, really? Because, um, yeah, my videos can get a bit long. But I kind of think that this format is the best at the moment. You know. Cool. Who knows? Maybe next year we'll... we'll will reach feature length movie time but no don't no i'm only joking but yeah i mean so thanks again for watching the video if you like this kind of content then please hit that like and subscribe button and uh you can also hit that bell notification because i upload a video every monday morning at 6 a.m uk time um, i've got no idea where that is what time that is for the rest of the world but you don't need to be up at that time you can watch it anytime you like and you can watch the whole video or you can skip bits and or you can just do whatever you like really but <laughs> yeah but yeah as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next week for another e-bike adventure take care bye bye
for the drivers. Let's do something. I'm not really getting this on camera. So grateful. It wouldn't have been possible without you. So big, big thanks. 